Hey church family, I wanted to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus. Now, if government-enforced lockdowns have kept you from earning a real living since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, and if you've already blown through the $1,000 stimulus check that you received last summer, well, then I'm happy to tell you that the government is you know, preparing to pass a $900 billion stimulus bill. Wow, that's huge. $900 billion. Imagine that divided up amongst every American adult. This would go a, a long way. If we take a second just to crunch the numbers, you know, there are 250 million adults here in America. And if you divide this stimulus package amongst the 250 million adults, uh, then we would all potentially receive $3,600. Uh, a couple uh, could then receive $7,200, which would certainly help to cover maybe some past due bills or, or maybe even have enough left over for a Christmas celebration with gifts for the kids. So then when should every American adult expect to receive their $3,600 stimulus check? Oh, wait, <laughs> well, we have to look at the small print here. They're not planning to divide, to divide all this money up amongst every American adult. No, instead, they're only planning to send us around 16% of that stimulus package. That's right. If this $900 billion stimulus bill passes, then the government is planning to send each of us $600. $600. And now, I can't help but to wonder, you know, if the government is only planning to send us $600 from this stimulus money, what are they doing with the rest of the money? Where is the 84% of this $900 billion stimulus bill going to end up? Well, it should uh, first be noted that the bill, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a whole lot of words. <laughs> they, I think they used all the words. It's actually a, a bill that's close to 5,600 pages long. And, and Congress, well, they had five hours to read through the whole thing before voting on it. I downloaded the bill and I did some searches and, and I just wanted to see, you know, uh, what I could find. And, and, and here's a few fun facts about the bill. Uh, currently, uh, there's more than uh, $818 million of this stimulus package, which is earmarked for the Smithsonian Institution, because we all know we need the Smithsonian Institution uh, to get through COVID-19, right? There's $129 million set aside for the Navajo Irrigation Project. More than $33 million will be used for improvements on the Environmental Protection Agency facilities because we got to have the EPA to get through COVID-19. Almost $60 million will be used for water infrastructure finance and innovation programs. Uh, nearly $11 million have been set aside for the Institute of American Indian and Alaska Native Culture and Arts Development Institute. More than $153 million are set aside for salaries and expenses of those at the National Gallery of Art and another $23 million just for their facilities. The National Endowment for the Arts will receive $167 million. The National Endowment for Humanities will receive $167 million. The Commission of Fine Arts, which includes seven members, is going to receive over $3 million dollars. And the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation will receive close to $7.5 million. This bill also includes millions and millions of dollars for uh, the government in Egypt, Sudan, Burma, Pakistan, Venezuela, and the list goes on. You know, I also did a, a search for the word vehicle in, in this bill. And there are more than 200 line items that include new vehicles for everyone, everyone but you. <laughs> I, I also did a search uh, for the, uh, you know, uh, you know, as I was uh, actually searching through uh, uh, and looking for vehicles, you know, the, I saw that this includes $193 million set aside for federal workers who work abroad so that they can buy a brand new vehicle, but only if they've already been infected with AIDS. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. Now, as we consider all of these line items that have nothing to do with COVID-19 relief for people here in America, we must fail to remember that our country is already in debt. We're already in debt to the tune of $27 trillion. We don't even know what that means. We're in debt $27 trillion. And knowing that a $600 stimulus check isn't going to solve anyone's financial problems here in America, we should take a moment to ask, why is the U.S. government leading us deeper and deeper into debt if they're only planning to provide us with 16% of that stimulus money? Why are they pretending like they're passing this bill for our benefit? 
Uh, for example, Nancy Pelosi, she recently tweeted this. Families struggling for months already to keep a, a roof over their head and to put food on the table can't afford to wait. They need urgent help right now. Well, this is true. She's right about that. The government-enforced lockdowns have kept many Americans from earning a living this year. And so Nancy wants us to hurry up. She wants the Congress to hurry up and pass the bill so that she can send us $600. Because <laughs> that's going to help. Meanwhile, this career politician has $600 worth of ice cream sitting in her $20,000 refrigerator. Knowing that this stimulus package that she's endorsing and, and pushing for in, includes all kinds of ridiculous line items, which include millions and millions of dollars to be sent to foreign governments like Venezuela, it's time for us to realize that, listen, th this is all about being prepared for the Great Reset as globalists continue to bankrupt our nation while simultaneously creating the conditions for the hyperinflation of our economy, which will set uh, the stage for socialism. And so Merry Christmas. As much as I would love for the government to send out free money, we must remember that there's no such thing as free money. No such thing. And as we consider all of the insane lying items that uh, we find in this stimulus bill, uh, I pray that it ends up being vetoed. Uh, and not because I don't want Americans to receive $600, but because I don't want Americans to pay, you know, for, for all these other things that have nothing to do with COVID relief. And I pray that there might be some conservative leaders who could prepare a bill that makes much more financial sense for our country. At the same time, I also encourage every Christian to remember what Jesus said during his Sermon on the Mount. There he declares, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Christian, listen, let's seek first the kingdom of God. Let's seek first his righteousness. And as we look for the perfect provision that he's promised to provide to us, let's continue walking by faith with the Lord. As we prepare our hearts uh, and as we pre prepare to celebrate the greatest gift ever given on that first Christmas morning, I encourage you to remember that those who trust in Jesus Christ have been called to fight the good fight of faith, all for the glory of God.